slowing down. I talk a lot about that, write a lot about it. Uh, sometimes I often call it finding your pace, which is uh, a different way of saying slow down. But why do I think that is so important? That's what I want to talk about right now. I've found that a lot of people, and a lot of people uh, of the people that I work with, have minds like pinball machines. They go all the time. It's they're always in their thinking brain from early morning to late at night. They're thinking about whatever challenges they face during the day, whatever it is that comes their way by in their work, in their regular life with family and friends and social obligations. And even when they go to bed, they're still in their thinking brain. And of course, when I start this video, a big truck is coming up. So I'll wait a bit see whether or not it will actually come my way and yes it will hang on there we go so a lot of people spend most of their time if not all of their time full on in their thinking brain and I don't know if you've noticed, but that can be incredibly tiring. So, if only for that reason, it is good to find a way to slow down. Now, when you've been in your thinking brain for a long time, when that is your standards mo standard modus operandi, that sounds really good, when that is your standard modus operandi, it can be a real challenge to find ways to divert much of the energy that is going towards your thinking brain towards that other part of your brain, which, could, which we can call your creative brain. So what I do is help people physically experience what it is like to slow down and how that also helps them slow down their thinking brain. And to do that, I bring people into somewhat challenging countryside. And that's, so that was, those can be the mountains or like I did last week, uh, the cliffs of Cornwall. But countryside that has somewhat challenging ascents and descents and is not just flat. It's more than just hilly, because in flat and in hilly countryside, when you move, physically move through that, and I, by, that, by that I mean walking or perhaps cycling, although I'm not a cyclist, so uh, that's not my forte. So let's focus on walking. When you physically move through that, through slightly hilly terrain or even flat terrain, it is so easy to move through that that you don't have to turn off your think thinking brain. You don't have to use that part of your brain for something else, namely focusing on what it is that you're doing. So when you go into countryside that is a little bit more challenging, that has steep or steeper ascents, steeper descents like cliffs, like the cliffs in England or in France, or the mountains of the Alps or of different countries, lots of places where you can find countryside that is a little bit more challenging. Your thinking brain all of a sudden has to focus on what it is that your body is doing. It has to direct your body. And once you've given that part of your brain that particular assignment, 
Pay attention to where I put my feet. Pay attention to how I breathe, to what my posture is when you're using trekking poles, where do you put your poles, all those kinds of things. Your thinking brain doesn't need as much energy for that task as it does for keeping the whole system running when you're in pinball machine mode. So now that it doesn't use that much energy for that task, for keeping the whole system running, that amount of energy that is not being used for keeping your body moving in a way that is safe and is maintainable, That amount of energy can, by, can be directed towards your creative brain in a way that is impossible when you're full on in your thinking brain. So when you physically slow down because you have to pay attention to everything that your body is doing in a terrain that is somewhat challenging and where you can hurt yourself when you don't pay attention to what you're doing you get to be relaxed mentally relaxed ideas can start dropping in again you start noticing things in your surroundings that may actually um, inspire you that may trigger something that creates a new idea, that triggers a new idea in your head and that is impossible or almost impossible when all that energy is spent on dealing with everyday problems when you're whizzing through life and whizzing from one task to the next. Now when you move slowly up and down mountains or cliffs or whatever the countryside is that is challenging, it is, um, it sounds weird, but it is relaxing. It is a mentally relaxing activity. You physically may feel tired, but your brain has quieted down and how good does that feel what would you give for a brain that actually is quiet when you go to bed where you don't have to almost physically try to turn it off it is simply turned off or is qu so quiet that you actually fall asleep and the fact that you're physically tired because you've been working, uh, working, walking for something like six hours helps with that. Because you're all of a sudden using your body in a way that is, it is designed to do. Our bodies are designed for walking. They are designed for endurance. They are not designed to spend all day sitting in an office chair in meetings or behind PCs. But how does this all benefit you when you get back to regular life? Because that, of course, is what it is all about. You want to be able to do this slowing down thing when you're back in regular life. The good thing about having physically experienced what it does for you to to be able to slow down is that you can reproduce that experience once you get back home. When you find yourself in that pinball machine state, whizzing from one task to the next, whizzing from, whizzing through life, you can then 
consciously decide to slow yourself down, to pay attention to your breathing, the same way you would do when you are hiking up a mountain or walking up a cliff, to pay attention to your posture and to very consciously concentrate on those things for a while and you will find that your body and that your mind starts to slow down as well and your whole being will be grateful to you for doing so and even when you're not close to countryside that is um, as nicely undulated as the cliffs of Cornwall or Bretagne in France or the mountains of the Alps or something similar just taking yourself out in nature and consciously walk slowly through whatever nature is um, close to you will help you but when you're in countryside that is flat or almost flat you have to consciously really consciously slow down and that will feel weird you may even start thinking well people will think I'm crazy what is this person doing taking a very conscious step instead of just walking but who cares this is about you and slowing your mind down so that you are not just in your thinking brain but can also access your creative brain because that part of the brain is ooh, so all of a sudden getting really dark we quickly move to a place that's a little bit more light there we go because that creative part of your brain is the part of the brain that will help you perform better than you already are in the work you do and the life you're living as always go there greatly <laughs>